So it's alive. It's not 100%, but it's alive. Uh, ben and Kevin stayed up till about uh, 12.30 last night working on this thing. They got the whole interior done. Check this out. Kevin built a new trans tunnel last night. We did all the carpet and the seats in. This thing looks good in here. It's done. I mean, we didn't cut a corner at the end. We weren't going to finish it until it was finished. And it's literally, you can get in it and drive it. We took it down the highway last night at 65. So it's done. I mean, 12 days. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get video footage of Casey using a Warren Winch for Ooh. the first time. No, not the first time. I've owned a lot of Warren Winches. I used to only buy Warren and only use Warren for years. I've had four failures with Warren winches. Two of them, by the way, that's the only brand of winch that has ever failed on me out of all the stuff I've used. Two of those were within warranty. They wouldn't warranty either one. The first one they said, because of water damage, um, on a winch that only ever seen rain. And the second one was a brand new winch very first use, very first use, first time, pulled out the cable, hooked something, go to pull it in, the winch died on me. Um, I had to pay to send it in for them to, for them to see, to warranty it. Then they found out that I owned a business and they do, they told me they're denying the warranty on the brand new winch that had never even been used fresh out of the box uh, because they did not warranty their consumer grade winches for commercial use. Interesting. Because apparently the winch knows whether or not you're being paid to pull on something. Yes. The winch so, is sentient. Then I said, send me my winch back. And they said, sure, send us a paid shipping label. So I had to pay them to get my broken winch back. And if you wonder why I talk so poorly of worn winches, worn winch, that is why. You brought this on yourself. You dug your own grave, now lay in it. Yep, yep. That is a snug fit. We got loaded up, we left bins, we hit the road. We are exactly 10 minutes into the trip right now and we have uh, already stopped for our first food stop. So Ethan and Ben are in getting, getting breakfast at McDonald's. Then we can go again. All right, we have been driving down this road for quite a while. We're really lucky that the road has been dry. Once we got out of like Bend area, that was all ice. Now it's been dry. Of course there's snow and ice everywhere else. We're going to check all the tie downs on the truck. Make yellow snow, then continue to the east. Never seen a Bronco with stacks. <laughs> I like the bullhorns and the plow mount, quick disconnect, and stacks. Just, I've never seen stacks on a Bronco. Last bag of checks, mix. Oh, last one. Right on. What other, what other kind of delicious snacks should we get for the road there, Casey? Candy. Candy. Oh, Most no, important part. This. Ooh. Ooh, Reese's and sticks. Then... Mix pack. Ooh, all right. And a root beer. Oh, big root beer guy. Right. Candy drawer here. <laughs> yeah. Here you go. Thank you, sir. I trust him with the goods. So, as you can see, the road is melting like right now. 30 minutes ago this was ice. Yeah, this yeah. this is like... It's like right now we're at the worst dry ice Halloween display you've ever seen. There, there, I'm just waiting for when we drop over and it's a yeah. sheet of ice still. It doesn't, it doesn't show up on camera very well, but... I know that, so that camera in fog and like this steam coming up, that camera cuts right through it makes it look like you have tons of visibility. Yeah. And like you look in person, you're like, I can't see anything. You look in the camera, you can see just yeah. fine. Yeah, this is like that creepy type of fog. Yeah, it's wild. It looks like dry ice. Spooky. Uh, we are heading to, we're not going straight to Utah, we're going to Burley, Idaho to Yankum Ropes Factory. 
And we're going to make a stop there this afternoon. Fair enough. After we get the slowest fuel ever. Yes, very slow. And the important stuff. Would you like one? I'm good, I got a rock star in there. I got seat. a boost in there too. A boost? What the hell's a boost? Boost. Like protein drink. Oh, uh, I have not had one of those. I'm, I'm good, I got boost. Well, you need to be healthy. I need to be. Whatever this is. Helps gain and maintain weight. See? Okay. See, how, see how good it works? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are not supposed to do that. Hey, Ben, check it out. Your truck's baby brother. <laughs> That's the Love's truck service truck. So Ethan had to get out in peace. He's hiding from the traffic between the truck, but he forgot it. You got a camera between the truck and trailer. <laughs> All right. Hey, good job hiding where no one could see you. Yeah, right. But did you forget about the camera we have right oh, there? Oh yeah, right. That's that one. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> we made it to Yankum Ropes. It was Yank. warm for a minute. Well, now what, it's cold. What minute? The minute that we were in the truck. Yes. For like five the hours last, straight. <laughs> the last almost 12 I think hours. we got up to like a high of 40 on the trip. Yeah. Alright, we're all in one piece. We are here at the Yankum Ropes Factory. Just let himself in. Super giant heater all the way down the middle. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cold outside. <laughs> Casey's gonna Casey's lay fully gonna nude go. on the ground underneath yeah. the heater. Yeah. Yeah, we'll crank it up. Nobody on the internet wants that. Everybody. Nobody. I'm sure OnlyFans have the monitor. Are you on there? Is that your next platform? That's, that's when he gets demonetized. That's coming next. Yes. yes. If, if this YouTube does, thing doesn't work yeah, out. I hear you. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Jared. Jared? Quick. Put this in the truck. You'll never know. When Casey tells you to steal things, you just steal them. You don't ask questions. Uh, tactically. Look, on video, we put it back. Yeah. Hint, hint, wink, wink. <laughs> Didn't happen. Yeah, if you, want, if you want ropes or straps, this is the place. Uh, no kidding. As you can see. There's many. They have large, they have small. They even got a bed. And they also have a casey. These ones, they have all these ropes, they have all the shackles. Two and a half by you 20. Know, the real MVP in this building is this cardboard box that is still holding together yes. with all these things <laughs> out of it right now. I mean, these things are truly gigantic. They are like, enormous. How far is that box right now from just going? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, well, do I see how the ropes are done? Yes. Yeah, let's go. Okay. So this is Mr. Oh, I could, I could mess wow. this up so bad, so fast. Oh yeah. Wow. You gotta watch your elbows. I mean, you can you can snag one of those pretty fast. And Look how tiny these are. I know. Yeah. So this, so in each one of these little guys, it looks like dental floss, right? I'm putting my hand in my pocket. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you get one little snag, then you walk, yep. you can you can drive home and it'll still be on the spool. <laughs> like. How, how many feet are on a brand new roll? I, I don't know. Um, we get various sizes, so we get kind of. I can ruin an entire stuff. business right now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you, well, you make somebody's day pretty messed up. <laughs> yeah. So they'll fix yeah. it. So here's what's crazy. In this, there's that's not one fiber. That's 68 tiny little filament fibers. To make each that. one to make that one row. Yeah. That one. So in, in there, there's 68 filament fibers. Each one of those is like they're smaller than a human hair. Tiny. And bitty. how many of these that is 68 go into one rope? A oh, good question. I got. I, I can't remember. <laughs> let me, let me just show you. Line. Listen, <laughs> it's a big. It's a big number. He's got them all on spreadsheets. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So what we do is we we take all of this. And we make the yarn. Oh, wow. knitting. We have it set up. So I'll just go ahead and show you. Wait, it goes into like. Ribbon. Uh -huh. Oh, it's, we're, I'm going to need to show you how we how we do the machine. So this machine, you guys watch Sleeping Beauty? No. I mean, 
you got a little kids. You got a little girl. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. So I, I'm not that I'd like to point, admit. So, so you okay, should. so there's that thing that she pricks her finger on, falls asleep. I have no idea what you're talking about, but okay. okay I know right. what you're talking about. They probably do, so we'll just keep rolling. Sure. Right. So this, this is just a really advanced twisting machine. That's what it does. It Thimble? spins. The, the it's, a, it's a giant twizzler making machine? Exactly. Yep. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a bunch of those fibers, and we're going to put this in. So right now this is geared to do the three-quarter inch um, core yarn. So there's two different diameters of yarn, and then you have to do opposing twists. So we actually we have to make four of these in order to make any rope. It's kind of cool. I'll show you. So, did, did you get permission from the guy who runs this every day to actually do this? Or are you going to get in trouble I did. when you I get got, back tomorrow I, morning? I probably, I'm probably going to get in a lot of trouble. So, all right. So what we're going to do is I just want you guys to see. This is kind of fun to watch. But what this thing does is it spins. Yeah, automatic doors? I don't know why it has a handle on the door. That's the yarn that goes. So in the they corner. it rolls it one way and then the other wow. back over it. Well, yeah. So it, I mean, that's just how it gets it on there, so it doesn't slip off or fall off. This stuff is really slippery, you know. So last time I was here, probably closer to a year ago, these racks were all set up and brand new. They had just put the new racks in, and all of this was bare. And I'm just thinking, who had to set all this up for the first time and route all this for the first time? Yeah, because and how every, long did that take? Every one of these holes and strings corresponds to another string that has to go in a right. certain and way over a here. Spool over and here. a spool over here. And a spool over here, yeah. So yeah, those, yeah. All, that all has to go in a way that nothing entangles. Right. Goes through the proper hole here to the proper hole in there. Yeah, look at how many are coming through those holes. Yeah. 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 Nice. Incredible. Like a mechanized spider of sorts. The wizard. You're at James wizard Bond movie with all like yeah. the lasers that are every which way. It's like what it looks like trying to <laughs> yeah. walk through yeah, there. Yeah, no kidding. And you can't see it on film, but it's there, I promise. We've got socks over these. What that is is to keep these things from jump roping. So when they start pulling pulling all the yarn off of these spools. Oh, that holds it. Yeah, these are actually leggings. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies' leggings. So, anyways, but yeah, those, those will just spin, and what they're doing is we're putting them on the braider bobbins, and the braider bobbins are what go in the braiding machines. And that's, that's the fun part. But this is the part you would totally screw up if you tried to run this machine by yourself? Well, okay, he's, we're in the process of going from one, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just say yes and move leave on. It, yes. Leave it to the there professionals. <laughs> that's what he's saying. Yeah. I got a guy for that. Yeah. I can do it. I just yeah. don't know where he's at in the process. So this, this is where we braid the inside. Of the I road. saw this one run. Last time I was here, you had yeah, this briefly. machine set up, yep. and I saw it, it goes forward, and you can unwind. This, so this is a crazy thing he did. He ran the machine and made rope, and then he put it in reverse, and it undid the rope and put it back on the spools. And I, ne I blew my mind that that was like a possibility. But I can only go in reverse for about half of a rotation, which is about three inches. I, it was but still it, super cool. It is cool. It is cool. But if I go any farther than that, then it just turns into a giant knot. You know what a good video that would make? Oh, it would be making a really great video. <laughs> so this is the core to the rope? Yeah, that's the core to the 70 inch rope. So this came, all of this came out of there. And you see what that is? You'll notice that this is a little bit larger weave with thicker yarn. So it's thicker yarn in the, in the core and thinner yarn in the jacket. We, the other thing, too, is we, we have more mass in the core, and the reason for that is this rope is engineered to fail from the outside in. You want the rope to start popping the yarn and the jacket. So you see the failure so before the, the failure happens where you can't see, and right. it catastrophic fails with right. no warning. You want, you want the rope to fail from the outside in, and using the smaller yarn does that as well, too. There's less, a little bit less mass in the jacket, so a little bit more of the load. It's... It's not quite a 60-40, but yeah, it's a similar if it design. starts to pull apart, you'd see it yeah, you visually, can, you visually before see it's happen. a surprise. Yeah, you don't want the 
core to fail on the inside of the rope and not know what's going on. Okay, so, anyways, the this jacket braiding machine and that forward reverse thing. I'll show you. Let's see if I can get it to turn on. You twist the off button right there. Twist the button. Case you touch things. There you go. Oh, you, <laughs> you oh, got boy. a button. Uh, Look at the braid happening up there. So this is running slow. You have a slow feature in here so that then you can change out the bobbins as you need to. If you need to go in reverse. Yeah. So the reason for this is if you ever need to, so these are the carriers that carry all of all of the yarn. So if you ever need to take them out, this, these are the two places where you can take them out. And when it, so you rotate it to where these get where yep. you need, you can pull them out. So you, so I need to take that yellow one out, I bump it, but it's really hard to get it lined up. So then you can do the fine adjustment there and get it lined up just perfect and then slide it out. Which is cool. But yeah, it's it's a very this is a very old tech, but a very sophisticated machine. Right. So this we've been we've been braiding rope for a very, very long time as a civilization. You know, try and live a day without rope. You can't even get out the house. Can't even take a shower. So, off, off, off. <laughs> it's everywhere, Casey. It is. All right. Oh, this is the high fun speed? part. High speed. Okay. Now we'll speed it up. Seven feet. Thirty-seven feet. Times one point two million is how many feet are in of the smallest fiber are smallest in fiber. one rope. Mathematician. Divide that by however many feet are in a mile, and that's how many miles are. I wonder if we get around the world with seven eighths inch rope. That would Maybe. be cool. Yeah. Somebody who's good at math needs to help us here. How, how many times do we get back and forth across the country? Maybe, right. Do we even get one? We get. We gotta get. 37. 3,300 miles across country. 3,300 miles. So 37 30 times 1. How many million? 1.2 million. Oh, 1. Yeah. 2 million divided by however many feet in a mile. Because that'll give you the feet. Yeah. So uh, 5,280 feet in a mile. Yep. I'm glad somebody here is smart. Yeah. I can't calculate her. It's after five, so all the smart people went home. <laughs> don't, don't think I'm good at math, because I'm not. <laughs> but. That's how we make your rope, Casey. That's, that's amazing. That's how we make the one you that's use wild. over and over. I like it. It's a lot of fun. It went right here in Idaho. Yes. And that's the first, yeah, well, that's the first of a few steps. So like, that's, that's, this is what I would consider the easy part. So after that, then we have to splice it. And tie the ends. And tie the ends. We have to do that by hand. I, 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 t I tied the ends of a couple of uh, winch lines by myself. Yeah. I only bled once. Oh, nice. That's good. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, there, I mean, What's funny is when we did a video, like we said, yeah, we make our ropes by hand, and, and we showed all of the machines, and we got called on the carpet for that. Like, well, you're not obviously like weaving the rope. Yeah, by that, braiding it by hand, that's, yeah, that, that's a bit too much. Um, so the machines will braid, braid the cordage for us, and then from there we make the slings by hand. So you so, do all the splicing, all the time, yeah. everything And then the thing as well, too. Yep. So what we do is we dip the eyes first, the reason why we dip the eyes is because if, if we dip, there are machines where you can dip the, all of the cordage all at once. It's a pretty impressive machine. It's a very expensive machine. We want one someday. But anyways, if we don't, if, if we dip the containment coating, the red, 
on the rope, then the, the polymer that we put on the ends won't stick to the rope. You could de-glove it with your thumb. Like mm -hmm. you could just peel it right off. Um, the reason why we do this is that this will impregnate into the jacket and it becomes part of the rope. And that's why it doesn't peel off. Um, it, it'll never And that's off. why it makes the end so durable with whatever you're hooked into because yep. this is now part of the structure of the rope. Yeah, everybody oh. says, why are your ropes so, so dang expensive? Well, this, it, this, just because we go through the process to make sure that it won't fall apart on you. Um, and yeah, so we have to dip this by hand and you can see After it, it's a messy process. After slicing it and tying it and weaving it by yep, hand. by hand. Then we dip it by hand and then we dip it again by hand and then we we sew up the tag and then we and then put you that on the rope. tape off the ends by hand and dip the color dye. Yeah, it's gotta be it's gotta be masked twice in order for it to work. So Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. We don't because you gotta mask it here or else you get a you know oh, a really yeah. gross line. And then you have to mask it. So you gotta mask it, dip it, do that whole thing, pull sure. the tape off, re mask it by hand, then dip it this way. Yep. And that's why you see the Pull you in a rope. So we run that, you know, that's so just long enough to do a 30 foot rope. Here. It's like, there, you're going to need a taller root. Yeah. <laughs> and then you, you dye it. Everybody asks us, so why do you only do a 30 foot rope? Well, <laughs> they're limited by <laughs> There's your answer. <laughs> yeah, but this is why. <laughs> yeah. So is it cheaper to dig a hole or make the roof taller? Hey, yeah, that'd be it. I saw a grain silo down the road that might be for sale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the top of the silo. Whatever you want. 60, 70 foot rope, you got it. Yeah. So I'm gonna move, we're going to move this sewing machine over there so we can have some more drying space. But this is where we make the tags. And then uh, go from there. Like literally by hand sitting here doing it. Yep. Yep. That's probably the most sophisticated piece of machinery. Smartest piece of machinery in this whole room. No kidding. In this whole um, probably the whole building. I like to check out the camo leggings. Oh, there we go. Yeah, are those blue lemons or what are they? Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, you should hit up for a sponsor. So listen, here's the, <laughs> here, well, okay, so. I like the engineer. I gotta be though. careful what I say. <laughs> you know what? We gotta move we're, on. We're no, just gonna leave that right away. What, what size do you use? Yeah, right. <laughs> They're probably right in the middle of this, but this is where the splice is made and then the lashing will go to hold it all together. Gotcha. And you said there's a seven foot section of rope? So no, it's that goes seven additional feet to make a 30 foot rope. Oh, okay. Because so of the, the, the eyelets and then the bit, the splice is how much it bears gotcha. back in. So the reason why we put that lashing on there isn't to hold it together, isn't, isn't really to make it stronger. It's just, well, yes, it's there to hold it together. It's Thanks for making it. me look like I don't know what I'm talking about <laughs> in my own video, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, like you were saying, that, that lashing, what that does is it just creates a little bit more of a friction binder to keep it from coming undone. Because when it's under load, it won't come undone. Um, oh, when it's slack. It's when, when it's, it's slack, when it's, when it's loose, bouncing around in the back of your truck, it can come undone that way. If it's not lashed. Yeah, if it's right. not lashed. Yeah. So kind of like, oh, oh, we were both truck drivers, mm -hmm. all the air system fittings are all push locks. Yep. When the truck's aired up and under pressure, they're never going to come apart. Right. But when there's no air pressure in the truck, if it was on the trailer getting hauled, bounced around, I've had them come apart. Yep, exactly. Same idea. Okay. Same, same exact in, thing. In, in truck driver speak. Yep. Because we were both truck drivers. Yep. There yep. You go. The more you know. So that and that's that's what it does. When it's under load, when it's got friction, it's, it's good. So. Yeah. Anyways, but yeah, that's this is yank and ropes. This is what we do, and we're just trying to scale and expand and do more. You know. I think what's neat is like, I think that this setup of a business is a lost art in America. And what I mean by that is there's a person at every single station here touching, sewing, making a label, putting stuff together, dipping, packaging, boxing, everything. There's a human being. And a lot of the manufacturing of the world has just gone fully automated. And all of this would just be on a an assembly line or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I like how we were totally lost on where to go to end this, and Ben just came and saved us. There you go. That, that's why we'll we just, bring him. No, there's... Uh, Brought it together, <laughs> okay. <you> Ready, break. <laughs> You're like, like a conductor. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. like, he's like they're, they're, they're flailing. Okay, let me step in. <laughs> yeah. Let me save, save the, the video. Day. Save the video. Oh, shoot. No, but seriously, I think it's really neat in America to still see there's somebody that sits at a sewing machine. 
yeah. and makes a label like that yeah. you know everything has become automated you know and that's yeah. uh, it's cool and that you know I don't know how many people you employ here but all those people that you employ that do that you're supporting every one of their families to help their house you know what I mean like that's yeah you know, we've got yeah. we have 17 employees and we need four more all right so there's 17 families every day they get affected by the people that come work here yep. which is great yeah, that's what that, that's what I was kind of getting at. It's just like it's yeah. nice to see a person at every station doing something. When you know, big companies can throw enough money at it, they can have a machine built that can do the job. Yeah, and they don't can, need a person anymore. You can go on Amazon and you can buy a rope that'll perform pretty well. Um, it's not the same diameter. It's not the same grade of nylon. It's not quite as good, but they work. They'll work four or five times pretty well for less than what I can produce this rope. And it's sure it's, it's cheap. It's a cheap deal. But at the um, end of the day, you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. I mean, and how many cycles do you have on your rope? Countless. Couldn't even count. Thousands. Yeah. So yeah, you, could you, not even count. If you take care of the rope, I mean, you know, if you buy good tools and you take care of those tools, they will take care of you. This is hopefully one of the last ropes you'll ever need. Cool well, that is Yankum ropes. Casey, they left us alone in the warehouse. <laughs> Unsupervised. One of these would look good on my rollback. I think it's actually too big for like even my rollback. I, I think you might be right. There's this is a smaller one, right? What's this? Uh, I'm just saying this is the smaller one. One and one half. One and a half? Yeah. Seventy-four thousand pounds. Um, that's That'll a work. lot of pounds. I could drag some trucks up the pass in the snow with this. Oh yes, you could. Hopefully they just. We'll just. I know. Do they know how wildly irresponsible that is? Oh, well. Nice. Look at this. <laughs> He's gonna rob him blind. Quick, put put as many as you can in your pockets. No, Are they, hold on. <laughs> the Is this the only the camera in the building right now? Uh, it very well could be. Mm -hmm. You can get like uh, I think yeah, like three different tiers. this bag is way better than the bag I have. The bag I have has just like two little ties on the top. This has like yeah, a this is full on handle that's clamp. You got the the influencer. Here you go. Be happy. Talk about us, bag. This is what they actually give the customers the nice stuff. <laughs> 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 that's what Ouch, I'm saying. Ouch! You got the you got the uh, short stick. Yeah, this is really nice. Look at that, man. That's seriously impressive. I also like that they can write the phrase. Snatch ring, and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that that's a pro, that's approved in the in the in the warehouse. Yes. Alan, I would just like to say that it makes me very happy to see that we are not the only ones doing last minute scrambling to get ready to leave tomorrow. But we've had all week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that, those are an issue. An issue. For a long drive. It's got, it's got all the cool. Are you kidding? <laughs> it's got all the cool. <coughs> that looks great. <coughs> Even did the inside. Yeah, check out the interior they did last night at midnight. Middle of the night. And the seats, carpet, new trans tunnel. Wow. Wow. Oh. It, was, it was metal floor with no dash when we got it. <laughs> That's all like in the last 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> so when we get there and we've got your Land Cruiser and this, mm -hmm. are we going to just skip the whole vendor booth thing and the competition and just go wheeling? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, that might, yeah, after all this, we might just there's, ask you. I don't think there's going to be any sleep. I think it's just going to be okay. All right. Tonight's the last Wait, night. Wait, we have all night to wheel a competition during the day. Yeah. Tonight's the last oh, night to sleep. Yeah. Why yeah. sleep, right? Yeah. I'll just, oh, sun chairs. We need to have the sun chairs out at the booth. That's where we take a nap. Well, we're, we're judges. Yeah. So we can sleep during the competition. <laughs> and then we all night. And I technically have no responsibility. Yeah. I can just go take a nap in my truck. Yeah, because yeah. I brought a whole other cameraman. Right. You're the only one who has to work here. What the? <laughs> hey. hey. He's whoa, the only one whoa, getting whoa. paid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, wait a minute. <laughs>
minutes into six o'clock this morning. <laughs> it's been a long day. Well, yeah. it's been a long two weeks. Yeah. Thanks for your guys' help. It's yep. good. Yeah. Good hotel where you guys are going. This whole day. We'll see you in the morning. Good, because it's all your gear in the back of the truck. <laughs> <laughs> so we're still at Yankin Ropes, where if you hang out long enough, you'll get put on the payroll. There you go. <laughs> You better sell a lot of crap over there so we have to haul this stuff back. Yeah.